From the studios of KSJE in Farmington, New Mexico, I'm Nick Michael. I'm sitting here with Ashley Londy. And you are listening to A Review Too Far, where we watch movies and review them for your listening pleasure. This week we have Tobey Maguire in The Cider House Rules. And out in theaters now, Matthew McConaughey in White Boy Rick. But let's get things started with The Cider House Rules. It is based on the novel by John Irving and directed by Lasse Halstrom and stars Tobey Maguire as a young orphan who is raised by the doctor who runs his orphanage and goes on a coming-of-age trip in Maine where he gets his first job, falls in love, and learns about heartbreak. We have two new patients, one to deliver. Coming. First pregnancy? Yes, for both. I presume you'd prefer handling the delivery? All I said was, I don't want to perform abortions. I have no argument with you performing them. You know how to help these women. How can you not feel obligated to help them when they can't get help anywhere else? One, it's illegal. Two, I didn't ask how to do it, you just showed me. What else could I have shown you, Homer? The only thing I can teach you is what I know. In any life, you have to be of use. Of use? Yes. As mentioned, The Cider House Rules stars Tobey Maguire, but also there are Charlize Theron, Delroy Lindo, Michael Caine, Paul Rudd, Jane Alexander, Kathy Baker, Erica Badu, and Kieran Culkin. And let's talk about it. Ashley, what did you think of Cider House Rules? I think I originally saw this movie a few years after it came out, and ever since that first viewing, it's become one of my favorite films. The Cider House Rules was originally a novel, and uh, I've never read the novel, but I would very much like to. And it seems to me to be a film that has Michael Caine in prime form. I'm sure there are films where he's given probably stronger, probably more... Uh, award-worthy performances, but the Cider House Rules, he just seems to embody his character and and be a a wonderful, wonderful Dr. Wilbur Larch. I love the relationships that his character has with the nurses. It's these almost romantic, but almost sisterly, sort of strange, very close relationships that can form when people work together in isolated areas. And it, it really gives you a good insight into what these characters are sharing and and not sharing and going through together and and having to deal with. In the interest of full disclosure, this film does have a fair amount of discussions about abortion, uh, adoption, incest. There's a lot going on in this movie that can be very uncomfortable to watch. But it seems as though it's presented in such a way that it isn't as intimidating a subject matter as you might normally find. Michael Caine is very straightforward about what he does as the head of this orphanage, and that is that he delivers babies and sometimes he performs abortions. And he talks about how he just gives patients what they want and how that lesson comes up for Tobey Maguire's character later is, is really interesting and gives you something to think about. I would recommend this film. I think that this is probably more appropriate for late middle school, high school, and up. Definitely adult audiences will have a lot here to like. Shout out to Charlize Theron. Certainly not her strongest role, but I like her in this movie. She's She's got some interesting pieces to her character that you may not have expected in a 1940s woman. I think my only complaint about the film is that there's not nearly enough of the Cider House crew outside of Mr. Rose and Rose Rose. I, I would like to have seen more from those characters and a little bit deeper into their stories and where they come from. This is a story about Homer Wells and, and how he's going to come of age, but I wanted more from those side characters, and I felt like they didn't get their fair share. But I'll recommend this film. I, too, will recommend The Cider House Rules, though I want to acknowledge that I think Tobey Maguire is a major liability to the feature because he's basically just playing the same character who he always does, and that's this kind of goofy, quiet, thoughtful human who goes about life and tries to be wise by not really saying much of anything. And that 
can kind of be annoying. I, I did love him in Pleasantville, and I think that kind of role was perfect for that character. But that stock character in the Cider House Rules, I think, really undercuts the solid acting and emotional complexity that the character should have and that is given by the roles played by Charlize Theron, Delroy Lindo, and Michael Caine. I will reiterate what Ashley said that Charlize Theron did a great job, as did Michael Caine. I think they were the stars of this show. And I really kind of like Delroy Lindo and Erica Badu. I think their relationship as a father and daughter is complex and sad. And I, I think it probably could have been a little more tense when it comes to Delroy Lindo's uh, Mr. Rose, who can be violent when he needs to be. But I don't know. I, this is kind of a sedate, not quite Bridges of Madison County kind of film, but I don't know. It, it it it's not as not violent but edgy as it could be i think and that's interesting because it does tackle some rather touchy subjects ashley said it it talks a lot about abortion and i think that's the major theme of the film is uh, abortion rights and the morality or lack thereof of the act so i i think folks should be warned going in that it's it is kind of a message piece about abortion and the responsibilities of parenthood and just relationships in general. I do think that it does get a little hammy when it comes to uh, Paul Rudd and his soldier and, and the love triangle that forms between Tobey Maguire, Charlize Theron, and him. Uh, it, it's a little stock, but that's okay. I was much more interested in the implied relationship and perhaps uh, troika between Michael Caine, Jane Alexander, and Kathy Baker. It's never overtly said, and I think it's mainly hinted that Michael Caine and Kathy Baker's characters were having a relationship over the course of their time at the orphanage. But there were also hints there that Jane Alexander might have been in, it, in on it as well, and I thought that was a nice, subtle, polyamorous relationship that could be but wasn't necessarily confirmed. Uh, shout out to a lot of the child actors in this feature, especially Kieran Culkin. I think he did a good job. I wanted to see more from him. And I, I kind of wanted to see more about Paz de la Huerta's uh, character, Mary Agnes. She's kind of this uh, crushing character on Tobey Maguire over the course of the film, and I wanted more of her subtle development, too. Overall, I think it is a good movie. It's just Tobey Maguire annoys me in this feature. And on that note, final thoughts. Ashley. I think it's fair to say that Tobey Maguire is a liability in this movie. I wonder who could have done it better. I can't think of anybody off the top of my head, but it could have been even better without him. He doesn't make the feature for me. Michael Caine makes this feature. Eric Pear Sullivan has a quick role in this film, too, and he's he's really cute when he's a little kid in this movie, and if you don't know who he is, he was uh, Dewey on Malcolm in the Middle. I'm going to recommend this film. I'm going to give it four and a half stars. I love this movie. I think it was a nice, thoughtful piece. Uh, it is definitely a message piece about sexual politics in the uh, mid-20th century. I, I think it's worth seeing for the older teen set and up. I, I will give it a 3.5 out of 5 and say kudos to Michael Caine and Charlie Theron. And that will bring us to our cinema release of the week. And it is the based on the true story crime drama about a 15-year-old drug kingpin who was also an FBI informant, White Boy Rick. Daniel, go! Get back. Get off of me! Get back in the house, Don. Go in the house and get dressed. No! Get Dad! inside the house. Dad! Stop. Wait! No. No. Dad! Ah, oh, Christ. Keep going. I got it under control. You don't need to stop the car, Pop. Everything's fine. Don't get out of the car. Everything is not fine. A man just ran out of your house almost since my Imperial. You don't have a thing I under control. You. You, you're not going to let her talk to you I'm going to my house. Oh, I got this Christ. under control, all right? It ain't under control. Hey, stay out of it. Looks like Richard's having a bad day. No, Ma, I'm not having a bad day. My son and I walked into the lion's den this morning and walked out with the golden fleece. Ain't that right, Ricky? That's right. That's right. You're pathetic! Both of you! Hey, put some clothes on, will ya? We're going for custard! 
Directed by Jan Demange, and writing credits going to Andy Weiss, Logan Miller, and Noah Miller, White Boy Rick stars Richie Merritt as the titular character, but also has Matthew McConaughey, Belle Powley, Jennifer Jason Lee, Brian Tyree Henry, Rory Cochran, R.J. Seiler, Jonathan Majors, and Eddie Marsan, with small roles for Bruce Dern and Piper Laurie. And let's talk about it. Ashley, what did you think of White Boy Rick? So White Boy Rick is set in Detroit, Michigan. I am originally from Michigan, and it was nice to see some of the sites that I recognized. But beyond that, I didn't love this film. It had some pretty serious weaknesses. The number one one was Richie Merritt. He is just not very strong. I, I don't think he brings a lot to the screen. I, I think his accent that he was trying to do was was so flawed it became distracting. Matthew McConaughey doesn't attempt an accent or an inflection at all, and it's so much more authentic and comes across better. It, it's, it became such a liability as I got more and more irritated with the movie and with that accent. Belle Powley, I also don't love her in this. She didn't do I think a very good job. Her acting seems really one note. She's the sister of the main character. And I was very, very frustrated with both of their performances. And they make up almost all of the screen time for this film. So I am not thrilled about that. This film was trying to tell a story. But instead, what it did was tell three different stories. And it didn't do a great job of sort of marrying them together. This film didn't do a very successful beginning, middle, end, and that's probably because the real story doesn't have a very well-defined beginning, middle, end, but I thought that the writers could have done something to kind of seam this together a, a little bit better, and I didn't think that there was nearly enough conflict for me between the police and the non-police characters in this film, uh, specifically Matthew McConaughey's character. It's killing me not to spoil this for you because I don't want to, but it's difficult to give you my complete review without a spoiler. Suffice it to say that I, I think this film is trying to do too much. I think it's trying to send too many messages. It's trying to give you too many things all at once. Whereas if the film had just focused on maybe one or two or even three messages, it probably would have been more successful. But here I counted dozen, almost a dozen that we were trying to get at, and it just seemed really, really forced and didn't give me enough entertainment to make up for the amount of learning I was having to do during this movie. If you know anything about White Boy Rick, I think you'll enjoy this movie. I think you'll really enjoy it. It is a true story, mostly. Um, so maybe read the Wikipedia article after you see the movie. But if you don't know anything, it, it's a fun adventure piece. There's some really cool shots and there's some really interesting how are they going to solve these problems questions. Overall, though, I don't know that this is a very good movie because of its main characters and I will never probably watch it again. For my part, I have a kind of love-hate relationship when it comes to this movie. I like the main overarching theme, which is, to me anyway that White Boy Rick is a tale about the broken promises of the American dream. It's set in post-recession Detroit, which is just a barren wasteland of poverty and drug abuse and only has success for the very fortunate criminal few, including uh, drug dealers and politicians. Uh, there, spoiler alert, there are some politicians that uh, seem to be involved in some rather corrupt dealings in this feature. And I, I, I like the meta narrative that this movie brings to what is essentially American decay. And I think that is the main strength of the feature, aside from Matthew McConaughey's performance. He did a great job, but he's done tremendous work the past decade or so. I saw some press on this feature that defined the movie as a career redefining moment for Matthew McConaughey. And I'm going to disagree there. While he does really solid work in it, I would probably say that quote should be reserved for his work in Dallas Buyers Club as opposed to this. It's a decent feature, White Boy Rick, 
but it's nowhere near the level of McConaughey's other films. And honestly, everyone else involved, while they're doing solid work, it's nothing really to write home about. I, too, agree with Ashley that Richie Merritt, while maybe not miscast as Rick Wersch Jr., he just doesn't have the charisma. Maybe that's just because of the character. But, I don't know, I, I find myself not really sympathizing much with Ricky. There are several scenes that kind of cement that he is kind of a scumbag, and while he does care about his family quite a bit, it, it's hard to empathize with him over the course of the feature. And that's a little sad. The pacing is off, but I think that's because it's based on true events. It's hard to know where this movie is going and where it's going to end. Uh, we eventually do get there, but when the credits started rolling, I was actually expecting a good 15 to 20 minutes more to see. And that's weird because the film was already over long as it was. I think there were several points where they could have stopped it and gotten away with a much better coda but as it was it was it was all right it's just not mm, it's not amazing i guess in terms of crime drama or family drama i'm gonna say this is a dvd rental at best and on that note final thoughts ashley this actual story is so interesting and, and there's so much to it that's just fascinating and there's backstory that isn't explained in the movie that I think would have would have helped explain how Detroit got to this place but it's just lacking in what it needed to be more entertaining and overloaded with things I didn't enjoy I'm gonna give it two stars and say that it's okay uh, I've got some people in my family that are from Detroit that I love very much but this is just not a movie I'm ever going to watch again. Thanks to Matthew McConaughey's performance and the fact that this is a thematic narrative on American Decay, I think I'm going to give it a two and a half out of five and say it's interesting, but it's also quite boring and more than a little depressing. And that'll bring us to a close. If you have any questions, comments, and the like, please feel free to email you can reach us at ksje at sanjuancollege.edu. Just make sure you put a review too far on the subject line, and we will be sure to get it. Any parting thoughts as we go, Ashley? Yeah, I'd like to thank Alan Theaters for bringing these films to our community and to San Juan College and KSJE for hosting the program. And from the studios of KSJE, I am Nick Michael. I've been sitting here with... Ashley Lundy. And we'll see you folks next week with more reviews and hopefully some recommendations. Coming up, The House with the Clock in Its Walls. <laughs> <laughs>